Donald Trump, speaking of him, was back in uh, a New York court yesterday for his civil fraud trial. Now, he's also facing four criminal indictments, 91 charges in different jurisdictions. Yep. Of course, he's pled not guilty and denied all wrongdoing. Many people have tuned in to you religiously for years as you kind of carefully tracked and explained his various misdeeds. Do you, uh, did you always envision him ending up here? Or, or, and do you have any confidence that justice will be served finally? It's a really good question. And this is part of why I've been doing all this history stuff that I've been doing recently, um, because I feel like there isn't precedent exactly for this. But there is precedent for the Justice Department taking on people with a lot of political power. Mm -hmm. And you've had a lot of senators and governors and members of Congress who have gone to prison. It has happened. It does not, yeah. you know, it doesn't hurt us as a democracy. But people at the very top tend to bring a lot of political pressure to bring on the justice system to let them off. And that happened in this story that I tell in the book in 1944. We had all these people on trial for sedition. Yeah. And the members of Congress who were involved with them got the prosecutor fired. And then they got a replaced the prosecutor. They got him fired, too. Like we can't have a Justice Department that is subject to political pressure. We've got to protect the independence yeah. of the justice system. So I, I worry about it, but I also feel like I want to know more about our history of this so I understand better our capability to, for, for dealing with something that's pushed this much stress on our system. Don't put criminals in high office. It's really complicated. But. <laughs>